Marcus Blake with That Nerd Show. We're here at the 2018 Dallas International Film Festival. We're speaking with director Mark Turtletob for the movie Puzzles. So the first question I got to ask after seeing this is, how did you come to this project? Well, it was unusual, Marcus, because normally what happens is we and I have a production company in New York, and we develop a story over a long period of time. Later this year, we're doing the story of Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers. Right. And it took us three years to get the rights and to work with the family and develop the screenplay. This story came to me, it landed on my desk, someone sent it to me saying, I think you'll like to direct this. And what you see on the screen, 90% of that was on the page when I got it. So that doesn't happen very often. Right. Are you much of a puzzle person yourself? Or? I'm not, I'm not. But you know, what happened on the set is in between scenes, many of us would go off the set we had an ongoing thousand piece puzzle and we'd all put a few pieces in and then we'd come back in and start working again. Nice. And you talked about uh, you're also doing the uh, the Welcome Mr. Rogers, the documentary about Mr. Rogers. No, oh, we're actually oh. doing the feature film with Tom Hanks. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Is there anything you can talk about with that yet? No, it's uh, going to be shooting in September and we're excited about it. A wonderful director, Mary Heller. Okay. Now, um, in talking and you know looking at puzzles and stuff like that, it, do you feel like that the puzzle itself is the one that's or putting the puzzle together? It, it's it's more orderly compared to the rest of life. Well, that's one of the lines you've seen the movie. Obviously, sure. that's one of the lines in the movie. But uh, it's really for me, it's about a forty-something-year-old woman, Kelly McDonald, who I think is one of our great actresses, uh, who takes care of her husband dotes on her two boys, uh, now teenagers, and for the first time in her life, after 40, her life starts to open up, and uh, she begins to find something she's passionate about. So the puzzle is almost incidental, because it leads her down to New York City from suburban Connecticut, and when she's there, her whole life starts to change. Right. Okay. We're going to talk more about it in the morning. All right, let's dive into really meaning and metaphor behind puzzles more than what we could last night. Do you do you consider this kind of a an anti or love story more? I mean, or because of her trying to get out of her situation, or just a movie that's maybe about a woman you know who is okay with committing an affair or anything like that? Because I I didn't personally see it that way, but I'd like to know your perspective. Yeah, I don't want to give away too much, but I will, right. I will, uh, I will talk about it. Uh, no, I, I see it as a, it's not a, it's funny, the movie's called Puzzle. Right. Uh, there are puzzles in it, but you don't go to see this movie to go see this big puzzle tournament or right. great amount of puzzling going on. There's some, but what it's really about is it's about a 40-something-year-old woman, you've heard me say this, coming, right. coming of age. And when I received the screenplay, because I didn't write it, when I received it, much of what's on the screen was on the page. And uh, I love stories where people begin to find something about themselves that they didn't know. Right. And so for me, that's what it's about. It's about Kelly McDonald's character, Agnes, finding out something about herself that she didn't know. And that string that that leads her to is from suburban Connecticut into Grand Central Station and then her world opens up. Right. Uh, and that's what the movie's about for me. It's about her exploration of who she truly is. Do you, I look at the, the, the title puzzle as, as a metaphor that it's about her figuring out her own puzzle in mine. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she's had maybe clues about what she wanted to do and she does these little things throughout the day right. as part of her routine. But it isn't until she does, you know, explore that. That's when all the pieces finally fit about what her passions are and stuff. Yeah, and, you know, everyone's got a different interpretation. Everyone asked me about the title. It was fairly straightforward. It's a, it, it is a puzzle, and you can interpret it any number of ways, Marcus. Uh, for me, uh, it was literal. It's about. A oh, okay. See, I was doing my best uh, <laughs> to run through the answer for I'm a not that, I'm not that heavy. Uh, <laughs> Giving me more credit. <laughs> hmm. I, had a, uh, I had a professor in college who taught modern film, and she was great because she would, would always take people out drinking 
she was kind of a lush, but it was <laughs> always about her, fun, yeah, those questions and you know really getting to the in depth and stuff. And her thing was, especially for you film students, you know, that are trying to have meaning and not and go beyond just the, the typical action movies and stuff. Right. But like I said, that's what I saw. Um, you talked a little bit about Killing of Donald, about how wonderful that she is, and, and we're huge fans of her. Uh, Mostly, you know, I, mean, I think the first thing that everybody saw her in, you know, train spotting. Right. Um, what is what is it like to work with her? Kelly is really easy. Uh, so the process with Kelly, you know, each actor is different. Uh, but my process working with all actors is was not to rehearse. So we did no rehearsal. What we did is we talked about the character, and for with the character that Kelly plays, we said she's. We don't want her to be, uh, we want to see all of the dimensions that she has, her intelligence, her wit, her humor, her quirkiness, but we want those to sort of leak out. She's in a suburban household in, right. in Connecticut, uh, doting on her husband, doting on her two teenage sons, and yet there is all this uh, more about her that we, don't, that we only begin to see. And so what really uh, intrigues me uh, was to, that it not come out in what intrigued Kelly as well, is that it doesn't all come out at once, but it kind of leaks out. And so we talked about that. Uh, we gave her some general cues. And then when you work with great actors like Kelly McDonald and Irfan Khan and David Demon, you just uh, you let them do what they can do. And right. then you make slight adjustments afterwards. David, who plays her husband. Yeah. Yeah, I, he's actually one of my favorites because, you know, he's right. not really a leading man, he's just always there, but he has, like, I think a lot of people know him from The Office right. and right. stuff, but he's also in another one of our favorite movies, uh, you know, 13 Days, where right. you really believe that he is, you know, a former Navy SEAL, that kind of thing. One of the things I want to ask about him is, I like how the fact that you get this impression that he is just a typical women belong in the kitchen and all this. There's a, uh, and uh, I'm Catholic, so I mean I kind of get that mentality. I'm not saying I'm a good one, but I'm just saying I kind of get that mentality that there is that little hierarchy within the family. But by the end of it, while he's mad and he finds out his wife had an affair, there's still kind of that humanity that he cares about her. Is that on? Is that on purpose or is that his instincts? As no, an absolutely, it's on purpose. It's in the it's it, it's it, it's in the intention uh, of the movie, and that is, I wanted everyone to be not a stereotype, to be a fully formed character. And we don't, you know, we've all seen the sort of browbeating husband. That, that didn't interest me. It's not. Right. It's not all that people are. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, uh, David brought that, and I saw when we first met the warmth. And we talked about just talked about life and his relationship and his relationship with his wife and uh, and his family and you could see the warmth there and that to me was critical. I didn't want to have a stick figure playing Louis. I wanted to have <laughs> right. a fully dimensional character and I think he did a great job. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, since you don't you don't really have rehearsals and you guys talk about everything, how do you guys do that? Is it just kind of people going out, typical over drinks and? Kind of a round table discussion. Yeah, we did a combination thing. We did drinks. We also did uh, we'd sit uh, sit in the, in an office and just talk about scenes uh, or talk about the major scenes. Didn't even talk about every scene. We talked about major scenes and we talked about sort of the story and how the character changes over the course of the story. Right. And I did that with each of the actors. And then sometimes we would do it in groups of two. Never did anything bigger than than two people. Usually it was just groups of two. Uh, and we talk about sort of what's going on in that scene. There's a coping mechanism that I kind of notice within this movie. Uh, I mean, for Agnes, it is about you know the puzzle and everything because everything fits neatly and there's a process to it. And with her very mathematical type mind, right? Her partner, I notice it's about I don't want to worry about inventing. I want to worry about everything else, and that's my weird escape from my own problems. Yeah. Is that kind of intentional? Or? Yeah, I think it's really true. Somebody asked me after the movie last night, uh, they said, you know, it, uh, I just I started to think about it and I realized not only was the Robert character a catalyst for her to change, but that's the Irfan Khan character, but it was she was a catalyst for him to change. And right. little by little you see him beginning to get back into becoming an inventor and 
being engaged again in life. And so it's done suddenly, but it, it does occur. I'm also curious, um, while this, there is, you know, kind of, you know, adultery a little bit in this film, it's not, it really does, it's not about a love story and them running off together or anything else, is it? And I think that's kind of the misconception when you're dealing with that. I, I know with, and I come from a Christian family, as a very conservative, it's very black and white, um, without realizing that sometimes you just need that escape, it's just that one time, it doesn't mean I don't love my husband or family. Is that something that you're trying to bring out and make people realize that it's just, it's a very gray area, it's complicated? And yeah, it is complicated, and it's it's human nature, right? <laughs> you know, and and so it is a very particular story. It's not endorsing any one perspective. It's just trying to give a, a, a true story of what could occur in someone's life, and that's part of why I don't want to demonize the husband, and nor do I want to sort of uh, accentuate uh, the fellow Robert who becomes a catalyst for her change. Right. For me, it's ultimately about her and this is a process that she goes through and uh, yeah it does uh, it does spoiler alert it does lead to a relationship uh, for a period of time sure outside of her marriage so I always like to compare films so right. I'm, I'm gonna pull one out of the bag that I know most people have never realized and it's something where I think the movie ends right and puzzle actually reminded me of that There's an old movie um, uh, post a new hope that Harrison Ford did called Hanover Street had Christopher Plummer in it. Oh, I never saw it. Yeah, but wow. it's a it's a war story. You know, the, the uh -huh. plot is he has an affair with an English nurse, and uh -huh. her husband's a British intelligence officer, uh -huh. and just the fates align that Harrison Ford as a pilot has to fly the uh -huh. husband into a mission. And they, you know, crash and they have to complete the mission together. And they find out, you know, what's going on. But at the end, he doesn't end up with her. He's like, I can't do this. You have to go back to him. You, he loves you and all that, but I'm always going to love you and all that. And my life has changed having known you. Right. You know, so, and I know that was kind of common, you know, especially with that war. So I take that, I look at that theme as with Agnes, especially when she's not going to go to, you know, the tournament. Right. You know, Robert. Right. Right. Here at that nerd show, we have a very nerdy question we love to ask all of our filmmakers. Okay. So we're going to get that out of the way. Good. As you can tell, we're nerdy. We have the lightsaber microphone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you could have a superpower or a weapon of choice from the nerd universe, anything. From the nerd universe. Yeah. I mean, it could be anything. Lightsaber, phaser, Thor's hammer. But if you could have anything to fight the forces of evil, what would be your choice? I guess really great sight. Great sight to be able to see what's coming down the road. All right, little little sixth sense there. Thanks. That's a good one. I think that would also help being a uh, be a good director. That's where it came from. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. how it works. Thank you. Thank you.